Hello, it's Teresa here from South East London. I hope you're all keeping really well. The weather here has really changed and it's really cold today. The mini heat wave, also known as our summer, lasted a day and then resulted in thunderstorms which now it's looking really wintry out there. I see the squirrels out there and they seem to be collecting acorns to store so even they're confused. Anyway, I'd like to say thank you all for your lovely comments on this uh, this project last time and um, there are there were some wonderful things said by email and on the YouTube comment section I do appreciate you taking the time to email just wanted to remind you about the handles here if you watch the last one and you you remember how I found one handle and then I had to go and look for another one which obviously I found well what I didn't say while I uh, um, was looking for those I found a piece of work that was done some time ago amongst a lot of other things and um, this is one of them which I'm going to um, experiment with for my own personal reasons but I thought I'm going to do it on the video and so you can I mean you all know about the progression of an idea now but I'm going to do it on the video hopefully some of you will come along with me for the ride and it's a way of using up all my net and some of the pieces of fabric I've got hopefully I'll be moving within the year or within the before Christmas and I need to get rid of quite a lot of things so I'm making a start now but obviously with the fabric you know how it goes it's too precious just to get rid of so I, I intend to use it on lots of little projects which this is one now my initial inspiration was an artichoke and this is simplified stylized version of just part of the artichoke and of course that the the head would be in here with more more pointed leaves around here but as I've just said I, I simplified it and these were the colors I intended to work in and the blocks are just to indicate I thought I was going to work in needle weaving but definitely these colors and this is the actual scale as well that I worked with so that was the initial inspiration if along the way I can find my old sketchbook with the actual sketch of the original artichoke I'll um, bring it in during the course of this video from that I went to this the artichoke leaves here have been simplified and reduced to their basic geometric shape of an eleng elongated triangle here. The contrast, our artistic contrast, is between these lines here which are narrow, they're together, and the lines here which are at a distance. So you have the contrast there. There's also areas here, large areas here, that have been kept plain against small areas here that have been kept plain so there's a difference there between busy busy and plain I just want to show you the progression of the idea from the previous one this, this coloured sketch to this so this grew out of this the, this is layers and layers of net on a solid background and it's slightly padded with one row I'm sorry with one sheet of wadding and I think you might be you can see the wadding there I just can't pull that down for you to see the background color this is not the background color this is something I mounted it on so it looked nice and neat on the wall and of course it complements this color I've used several rows of net or layers of net in different colours and the idea was to lay the nets on top of each other to create a dimension but also to create other colours which I've done here now when I saw this with the handles in, in the box I thought oh I enjoyed this so much I'm going to have another go now I'm going to do it on the camera 
and perhaps we can all do this together. Now I'm not going to copy this, so I need to find my own inspiration, some more inspiration I should say, because this was mine, um, and not replicate it, but use the same technique of overlaying net and then cutting parts of the net away to make other colours. Now if you can imagine, this started off as one colour. It was all one colour. And to achieve these different colours, I just cut the net away. So this is what I'm going to do now. So I also found this. This is all I have of this and it measures 12 inches along here and 14 along there and all I've done here and I think we might have done something like this before is just join pieces from your rag bag just sew them trim them I just sew them together there's no secrets about doing this at all so I've placed this on a light a slightly larger piece of calico now I use a lot of calico because I, I buy it in um, not bulk but quite a lot of it at one time but you can use it anything to back it doesn't have to be calico I like it because it's strong it's nice and strong and this is a heavyweight calico as well you can buy it in lightweight as well lightweight medium and heavy this is heavy and I think that will make a nice strong background because at this moment I've no idea how many layers I'm going to put on here or where it's actually going to go um, how it's going to progress now I've sorted out some net and it's navy blue basically it is navy blue and white now I have two lovely pieces here of foil I think this is foil you just listen that is really beautiful so I'm going to start just covering up this piece of patchwork um, and I'm going to layer it see this one is a little bit shorter but it doesn't matter see already can you see this already by placing just these two down oh my goodness this is really clinging to me just by placing these two down especially the blue if you notice these colors here and the red how they change see they've changed already you're just going to cover those up something's catching on me and then I'm going to put some white net over that so we've got white voil, navy blue or any colour, black would do as well net and now I've just covered that up with the white then I'm going to cover that up once more with a dark net and I think this is still navy blue and lastly I'm going to put that piece of oil on top so these are all the layers I'm going to use and I have one two three four I have five layers of net there that's including the two of oil perhaps I should have ironed good grief my, my sleeves catching on the net I think maybe I should have ironed that first now what I'm going to do is pin this all the way round to hold it in place catching them all now some of these are quite a, a little bit well quite a bit smaller as you can see here so make sure if yours are different sizes that you do manage to catch them all because these will actually walk they are dance against each other which sounds really nice on the dance floor but not so nice on your craft table one in the middle to hold it there lovely and one there tack these all together around the edge put a nice knot in the end of your thread and just make some nice long stitches all the way round 
catching all the net together. So don't worry about the size of these stitches because you will be pulling them out. That's it, that's done. So I shall remove the pins and I might just trim some of that excess um, net off because um, it was catching on my sleeve. So I'll trim that and then as soon as I've done this, it'll be time to sort out some sort of design to go on the top. And normally that is the first step, but this time um, I've done the fabric first. So it's a bit of a, an unusual way of working. We are guided by the fabric this time. Right, now these pieces that I'm cutting off won't be thrown. They will be put right back in the rag bag. That's lovely. There we go. Let me just make that a little bit smaller. There. And that is our base now for the design. To hold the centre down while I sew, I've also put a line of tacking along there and along there. I went away and I had a look at a few ideas and I found this from the Sashiko project and even the bag shape there. And that design there, the hemp leaf, is what we did on the scarf. So if I hold that up, that is the hemp leaf, sashiko, on this scarf. And I thought, hmm, I like that. I really enjoyed sewing this. So I settled on this, the hemp leaf, but I only want the design. I'm not going to do it as, it's, as if it's sashiko. It's to transfer the design onto the fabric by way of paper transfer. I did it on the face-to-face -face class that I did, but I also think I did it on the, the video as well. But in case I didn't, I wasn't that long ago, I'm going to do it now just to show you how to transfer the paper. If I did this before in the video, I did it with um, a dressmaking fabric, the dressmaking tissue from a, an old dress pattern. I think on the face to face I did it with, with something else. It wasn't dressmaking pattern. Um, it was something else. But this is ideal. As you can see here it says flower shop. Flower shop there. I had a really lovely bouquet of flowers in this some time ago but of course I don't throw much because it might have its uses. And Lo and behold, so it has. I've got a permanent pen here, permanent marker pen. The only thing with this is I have to be careful as I move along because this smudges until it dries. I need to do it that way. Oh, that's it. I feel happier with it that way. So I'm just going to literally just copy it. Now, if this didn't smudge, I would use a ruler. Um, to do this just to ensure that the lines are straight but if they're not straight you can straighten them up as you go along as you actually sew right that's done and um, there's a couple of mistakes on that there but that really doesn't matter I need four of these so I'll crack on and do the four I divided this, the 12 inch side, so 12 inches, these are 6 inches each, so obviously I'm not teaching you maths, but I need two for the 12 inches, so this is how it will be placed, like that, I, I shall match up the patterns as well as I go along, so it's going to look like this, now what I'm going to do is start them quarter by quarter. I'm not going to do the whole thing like I did on the bag. If you can remember doing the bag, um, I did I did the whole design in one go. I had to do it that way because that doesn't divide up into four nice quarters. It was just easier to do that as one design. 
um, but this divides up nicely into four exact quarters so I shall start over this side and right now I just want to make sure I get this the right way round so when I pop that one there I've got a little bit of one there yeah that's lovely so where is that one I want I want, okay, I want, I want, I want that one there. Right, so this one is going there. Now I'm going to try and get it close to the centre as possible. Put some pins in just to hold it down. So I'm going to pin it. Round. The problem is now I've got a shiny surface piece of paper or cellophane or I'm not really sure what this is and um, it's dancing a little bit against the shiny fabric texture of this fabric but it'll be fine once the pins are in. So it's that's three pins along each edge. Um, oh, it only needs two then actually and then one in the middle to hold it in place and then the tacking can be done now all I'm going to do is tack all the way through each line and I'm going to do it as if we were doing sashiko and I'm going to start with the long lines and I have actually I think I'm actually using the sashiko needle no, no I'm not um, but I'm still using a long needle now red cotton because it's going to show on the fabric here you do need a, a cotton that's going to show but not an expensive one the attacking has been done now all the way around the pen marks and I'll just show you the back you probably see it better on the back than the front now this is where it gets interesting fun just very very carefully going to pull it off and oh this is really nice for taking off because it tears so easily and there we are all off so if you've got any loose bits just pull them through to the back it that really doesn't matter that is the tacking done unfortunately you can't really pick the the design out on the screen I'll make it bigger maybe you yeah it's um not not very clear on the screen but it is definitely there so I've already threaded my needle now I'm going to use three strands of embroidery floss this is actually silk three strands of that and I'm going to do a small running stitch all the way around the red where the red that's the first one done I'm just going to remove all the tacking and then I should do the other three exactly the same way it didn't take long to do um, and it, look, oh, it looks really good close up unfortunately because of the, the colour it doesn't seem to be coming out too well on the screen but here we go that's lovely I might do this from the back actually I think it'd be easier from the back now you don't have to use a sashiko design on yours you can use anything you like but if you do want the, the sashiko Google Sashiko free templates. Now make sure they are free um, and you don't break any copyright rules and regs. So, um, but mine are free, uh, free printables. So they are out there and you don't have to worry about making your own. You can actually print them off. I mean, you could actually make your own with a set of. Um, diamond shapes quite easy now I've taken the tacking out I've taken another template and placed it here and I've managed to match 
the pattern with this one so there shouldn't be any gaps there it, the pattern should run right the way through and just be a continuous pattern might have to just alter some of the lines move the lines up a little bit like there um, oh I think apart from that that all matches so when I start sewing I will start at the end of where I finished um, and that way that you know that should work out well so that is the next thing I'll do and then I should think about placing the two below so I'm just going to carry on now and I get back to you as soon as I've got something to show and there it is finished didn't take very long at all but I will warn you that it's really hard on the, on the fingernails look at all this chipping and a broken one as well um, it does take a lot of effort to push the needle through and um, I kept catching the nail varnish but I mean I don't worry about things like that but in case you do you might just want to take care with, with your nails so that is done and all of that leads to do is for me to take out these little bits of tacking thread now that um, was holding it together so that's it I'll leave the tacking around the edge there's no need to take that out not at the moment anyway so oh I can tell that I've broken quite an important nail because um it's hindering me pulling out that thread so that would make a really nice piece of sashiko although I haven't followed the rules as in stitch length and one of the main rules is that you don't touch the uh, uh, um, that you don't touch a nearby stitch and you go under at the joins um, I've got all the confusion here where I haven't followed those rules but I'm not doing sashiko but I think you could be forgiven for thinking oh yeah, well that is sashiko it's very much like it but um, I'm just pleased with how the patterns come out the next bit is where it gets interesting I have a couple of options as to how to do um, the next bit design wise now I could highlight these star shapes here I could leave the star shapes intact or I could make a feature of if you um, I think you might see it better this way of the boxes if you look at this or maybe I need to make this a bit bigger sorry I've just made it smaller so you can see the star shape here now I could use that star shape here or I could make a feature of a box so if we look down here there's a definite box here a three-dimensional box with the lid the top there and here there's a cube see I could make a feature of either one of those or I could do a random design and the more you look at it the more shapes you can see now when I'm looking at the screen because I've coloured in one cube one box I can see all the others and those that are on top as well and I'm losing that star that star effect but if I pick out a star there I can see the other stars as well here and the one down there now you may need a collection of scissors they've got to be sharp and pointed so I've I've actually been looking for two specific pairs of scissors and if you think I can find them I found the, these four but not the two lots of embroidery scissors I wanted they're bound to turn up possibly after I finish this I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do now I'm going to take a pair of these sharp scissors and I'm not sure which are the I think these might be the more pointed at the moment they might even need another shot to be sharpened but I will start oh too much choice isn't there I'm going to start here because I can see all five here and it's near the end 
so I am going to very carefully now if you only want the top layer you have to work very carefully just to get the top layer yeah it really doesn't matter it's entirely up to you it's your work and you make the rules now I just want to cut that shape out there so the top of this if you remember the last layer of net was white so I'm cutting off the white layer there to expose the next layer or the remaining four layers there so that is the first layer that I've cut off now I could cut all those off so I end up with all these let's try and work this out so I end up with that's the star there I would end up with all these triangle bits here the same colour but do I want it like that I think I might like it a, a little bit more random than that so let's see what happens if I cut out down here two layers or more and I can see this is going to be quite absorbing so yeah now I'm getting down I've cut out that one and I'm down to this one which is showing the patchwork so I could very well cut that and completely expose the patchwork but I'm not going to yet it's too soon so um, let's cut out another one here and see what we expose if if I cut out the black one as well I think the black was actually navy blue if I remember rightly so here oh this is so nice to do You, you only have to be careful not to to clip the stitches but if you do it's easy enough to repair just go over the one that you've clipped right we can see now we're getting some more colour through oh, I do apologise about that <laughs> so no I still can't make up my mind whether to make a pattern or just to keep on doing this random style I think now I need just to to sit back up before I cut any more I think I need to sit back and decide if I want to cut the stars out or the boxes or random how I'm going to do this so I'm going to spend some time doing that and I will possibly carry on and carry on off camera cutting these out because I think once I start I'm not going to be able to stop yeah I'm very um oh my goodness I'm so tempted just to keep cutting them out uh, forget the star shapes forget the the cube shapes and just carry on which is probably what I will do but um, I just need a couple of minutes to think about that and then I'll get back and show you after I've made some sort of start this little bit has taken about half an hour to do um, I've done a, a half of it there's still another ooh, or maybe more than half to do but it's taking shape already now I'll make this bigger and you'll get a better idea of what's happening here so I started off and I made one box and the box I made was down here um, 
and I couldn't see how I would work all the other boxes or cubes in and then I decided to make a star so I made a star round about the same area down here but then I thought no it might take on a very formalized look that I, I really don't want so I've decided to do it random so there's no sense of um, cut one leave one or let's do this flower there's no pattern to this whatsoever I'm just cutting them randomly as I feel like it so far I think this bit has worked very well I think the red looks really nice poking through I can see there's some red up the top which I'm really pleased about up here um, I'm hoping there's some more red somewhere I really can't remember now what this look what the patchwork looked like i'll have to go back on the video if i want to see that but i'm not going to do that i'll have a nice surprise um so that is where i am at the moment so i'm going to carry on and get all these pieces cut out so the next time you see it they will all be cut out and then it'll be time to decide what else i'm going to do because so that's done now i've cut out all the pieces as you can see um, it's it's very very much like inlaid work uh, but with a little bit of a twist but um, that is the finished piece I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it and that is the effect I'll try and move the camera up slowly and then you'll get um, more idea of how it looks close up perhaps I need to move that over a little bit as well there we go and then I'll take it down to the bottom so you can see the full effect so I think it's a really nice effect but it isn't finished yet <laughs> now you could very well finish yours at this point uh, I'll make this smaller again right, then, I'm right. going to put a layer of net over the top to strengthen up the, the top layer and to stop any potential fraying I should pin this in place just move that down I have to do this in two parts because I buy this on the reel like that so I have to piece it I could do with buying bigger sheets or um, whole meters of it but that suits me it's going to need to be held down securely my being the next thing I'm going to do is now tack all the way around this net and just along here where the join is as well and then hopefully by the time I've done that I might have decided on what stitch I'm going to use around these edges or do I need to hmm that's the other question isn't it do I need to but I think I do because to me it's feeling, it's feeling a little bit underdressed at the moment so I should crack on now do the tacking and as soon as I've made a decision on the stitch and maybe started it I'll get back and I'll show you the progression I couldn't decide on a colour um, to go on the front I was tempted by several of these colours so I went back and I had a look at this to see how I worked this and um, I knew it was red and green but I couldn't remember how I, I did it I've laid the stitches side by side so there are two rows of each I thought I'm going to do the same here I'm going to lay a row of stitching either side or, oh sorry I'm covering that up either side of the white running stitch I shall lay a, a row of red so I'll have one row on underneath the net and one on top and that will really secure the edges and if there is a, a problem with fraying which I don't think there is but just in case there there will be in the future the red row the row on top we just add that a little bit extra to stop them rising and fraying I've started the red thread and I've just gone along the very long rows just as you would do sashiko actually so I've started on the long rows going across so now I've done 
all those going across I should start on the long rows going down and I just start this I won't do too much because you you all know what running stitch is so I should find a long a long line up here um, this one looks quite long and all I'm going to do is follow that line all the way down with the running stitch and I'm not too worried about how long my running stitches are some of them are longer than others but that's okay that makes it interesting now in sashiko um, you'd have to keep your stitches the same length and I keep referring to sashiko because this is the sashiko pattern that we use or design we use the hemp leaf and it seems only right for anyone who did that to to know that this it is not sashiko so I won't be doing this the same way as I did my sashiko last time all I'm doing as I said is running this all the way down next to the white and it is so easy and so quick to do so I've done from where are we from there from there to there already now I'm going to carry on I really enjoyed doing that and it didn't take very long so all the red is now in place I'm just going to very very carefully and slowly pull that down so you get an idea of the whole look there we go so that is all the red and what I actually did afterwards when I finished the red I cut away some more areas only maybe three or four because around here this area here it was looking very dark and it still is so I cut away I'm not sure what I cut away now it might have been that one there's a couple around here and some over here I'm not sure if I've actually finished cutting away at the moment I won't know until I do the second colour now I looked at this and thought yeah that's very nice but it's too red now and it needs something else so I actually went back to this to see how I dealt with that problem then and I used green a complementary colour to red so I thought hmm I just love that combination I've used that before complementary colours of red and green and I thought mm, I'm very tempted to do that here and bring out this little patch of green there and there's some dark oh it's, that isn't on the screen hang on there's a little bit of green there and there's a darker green here so there are bits of green showing through it's like a stained glass effect isn't it so I'm thinking I'm going to use a green now this is actually a very lovely green it's a yellow green but on the screen it's looking more of a blue green a dark green but it isn't but before I move on to that I just want to show you something I found in another box and it's this it's actually on paper paper background it's joined here with a strip of paper so these are two sheets of A4, just ordinary printer paper. And then, just as I did here, I did exactly the same with different shapes on here in machine stitch. Um, and you can see, you can quite clearly see the machine sewing here. Now, for those of you who wanted to make this a quick project, wants to do it but doesn't really have time to do all this top stitching in hand hand running stitch you could do this on a sewing machine and you could do it exactly the same as I've done it here layer the net and then cut the net away so that is another option another way of doing this um, it's quite nice actually so um, I think I might have been making a journal cover of some sort obviously that needs to be lined but it's just an idea of how you can do your work alright so back to the project at the moment 
and here we are and I'm just going to start this off on the camera because you've seen it all before now and I'll start here where you can see it uh, what, where, where's that one what am I looking at here do, 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 that one because I'm working sideways so I'm looking that way and the camera is looking that way ah oh, is that the way have I just touched that oh wait, there it is so I will start here uh, now do I want it red no I'm going to have it the other side of the whites all right let's make this a little bit bigger I'm only going to do a few stitches to start off and then I'll carry on and I'm using sashiko needle here just because you can get more stitches on there. let's just see what it's, it looks like hmm yeah I think I'm going to like this finished so the green has now been placed as well um, and I think it's more prominent here face to face than it is on the screen I'll just try and make the screen a bit bigger yeah the green doesn't seem to be coming out too much on the screen I'll move that again it took a couple of hours to do this and towards the end I was feeling very tired <laughs> So I think now, hang it on the wall as I usually do and take it from there. I still don't feel that it's quite finished. It just needs something else. Um, I do like the way some of these have come out and they're looking, they're looking really good. And if I stare at it, I can see some boxes as well. I can see the cubes. Mostly though, I can see the, the, um, the stars, if you like. But then I'm looking here and right which way am I going round about here I can see the boxes so it's quite fascinating just to sit and look at since the last time I've seen you I've been to a very nice small art gallery stroke museum in Maidstone in Kent in the UK and I think I explained before that Maidstone is the county town of Kent it's very small and rural but it is really nice and the museum is very small um, and it's stroke art gallery as well and I just love it it the brochure says that it should take about two and a half hours to see all the way round, which is quite a refreshing change from the London museums, the, the large city museums, where it takes forever to walk around. And to be honest, you possibly can't do any of those large museums or art galleries in one day. Whereas this small county uh, county um, museum, you can, and a friend and I did, and we had a wonderful time. Well, part of the story... <laughs> still had this hanging on the wall thinking oh as soon as I finish this I will mount it use that as a teaching um, display uh, a teaching resource but I took as usual my sketching things in this roll it's a roll a very nice roll if you use it properly keeps the pencils and pens in there and um, erasers and sharpeners and I'm sure you've all seen it and it should roll up very very neatly well of course mine doesn't so no surprises there and I was sort of having a little bit of a moan about my pencils all over the place and the nibs breaking and they were, <laughs> they were actually in a plastic bag I'm very ashamed of that but they were in a plastic freezer bag one with the zip tops and I, I'm ashamed, I, I really am ashamed. And my notebook is far too big, or my sketchbook is far too big to go in this bag, so that was in my handbag. Anyway, friend and I continued looking on. My pencils are rattling in the bottom of the bag. And we came upon um, this beautiful display. It really is worth a visit. But I was so surprised at the amount of textiles in this place and looking through them there's a big um there's quite an emphasis on bags through this period of time well 
I'm going to flash up a picture of one that I particularly liked. And while I was admiring this bag and taking notes, I thought, hey, this is what I could do with this. Now, I know the last project was a bag, but you really don't have to make a bag. Um, we're not about construction and we're not about constructing items. We're about design. So for me, the construction is is just something that might happen and it might not. Well, it's going to happen with this, but you can finish your design work, your textile art, anytime you like. I will carry on with this and then I will construct it into um, a bag for my pencils, I think. That's the plan at the moment. Now, the bag that I've chosen, it's an evening bag and it's pastel, pastel blues it, it was, with metallic beads and it dates circa 1925 so you might as well say it's a hundred years old and it was it's really delicate looking it's basically blue and greenish I mean I imagined in its day it was it was vivid it was brighter with blue and green but I'm going to use this now if you're still looking at the picture it looks as if it has a flap top a very small flap top that comes over and it has a fringe at the bottom, a looped fringe, and quite a long handle, uh, uh, sorry, a long strap. So I'm going to be influenced by this, the design that you're looking at, or you've just seen. I'm going to be influenced by that design of that particular bag, and turn this into similar. Okay, but for the time being, that's what's to come at the end of this. Now, as I said, I'm being influenced by that, and it had beads on it. Well, at the moment, I'm not planning on putting beads on there. I'm going to put some sequins on there, the obligatory bling. I've sorted out some here. Now, um, I've got some little gold ones here that I like, and here. So, that's just part of the, the uh, sequin stash that I have. And I'm thinking... I might use multicolours. Right, I should make that a little bit bigger now. I might make a feature where these all cross and put maybe, maybe multicolours. I mean, I really don't want it to look like a Christmas tree. But at the same time, I just like a bit of shine on there. Especially now, I think I've got um, an art bag or a bag for my art stuff yeah now I see I like that um, I don't know how many colours to use I'm going to keep the, the centres all the same otherwise it might look far too busy and I might limit the colours on the larger the background flowers as well um, let me just pop that down yeah now that's my next step oh that's going to be um, a job and a half I think how many have I got of those one two three four five six oh six there six nine ten eleven I've got about 25 I'll have about 25 of these to do right the way through anyway so that's the next step so next time you see this these will will have been secured down it's quite easy needle through the center and you clip it either over sew it say about four times you can actually go around each of those petals uh, we have done that before you could even do that at the same time you could even do the two together so I'm going to, to get on with that. And that's finished. The sequins are all in place now. In the middle of the hemp leaves. Uh, let me make it bigger. Unfortunately, you can't see them sparkling. Let me see if... Uh, uh, yeah, if I move that a about a little bit, and hopefully don't make you dizzy, you might just be able to see them sparkling there. I haven't done all these on the edge because these will be uh, taken up into the seam allowance at some point 
so anything past there I haven't done they've all been done that side and the top and the bottom but it's just this side in case you can see that and think well you've missed one two I've missed two that was intentional because as I've just explained that will be straightened up and um, taken into seam allowance so I'm going to leave this now for a little while I don't need to say what I'm going to do with it or where I'm going to hang it oh look at that one sparkling I might even start making up the template I should sort out um, lining and fabric for the pocket in the front okay so so I'm calling this finished now I think if I do anything else um, I just feel that it will really be over the top not that there's anything wrong with that <laughs> but I need to finish it now I've chosen a piece for the back and the flap and it's this here um, this is really beautiful I've already lined it because these colors are in here poking out that this will be the back and it will go some some way like this back to back and this bit will come over probably not as much as that but that's that's the idea and that will be the back okay so I've already trimmed this took off quite a lot actually now yeah, I'm going to join them at the end here and just sew across the bottoms from here right the way across here so I'll just stick a couple of pins in there and then I shall machine sew across there to make one large piece now I've done that, that didn't take too long I'm just going to trim this off I actually made two rows of sewing on the bottom because I have a feeling this <laughs> this might take quite a lot of um, wear holding quite a lot of heavy things so that's the bottom done I'm now going to sew the lining wrong side to wrong side so the two right sides are facing out I know it looks wrong and it feels wrong but then after that you'll be able to see after I've got some binding um, what I'm going to do so I should do that and then I should sort out some binding to, for the edge of this right, the lining has been um, placed inside and it's been sewn all the way around the four sides so it's quite um, it's quite firm and secure now I'll just push that under and you can just have a rough idea how it's looking so this is now the pockets the front pocket and we have the seam here the join here between the back and the front so that's to go underneath like that and then if I pull this down a little way this is the flap which will go over here now the next thing to do is put some binding across both ends across here and across here now I've already cut the binding out um, I've gone for a pink with flowers now I don't know if this is the right thing to do but I like this and I think I'm going to pop some pink on there here's pink here and I've got flowers here and I felt I think that's going to look good my first reaction was to go for blue actually the dark blue then I changed my mind and I thought no no I love this I'm going to use this I've cut it in two inch strips for enough to go all the way around the four the four edges so it's quite long and as I said I do need to join it and then I've ironed it 
in half. I've got a really nice crease there now and I'm just going to machine sew this, pin it and machine sew right side to right side machine sew it there and then I'm going to machine sew it the other end as well so I'll just cut two here one for this end and then I'll have one for the other end oh look at that just that tiny piece over but I won't throw it I'll put it in the rag bag I'm, I'm bound to need that in a minute so right sides together I'm just going to secure it with a couple of pins just to hold it firm so when you do this you should now be looking at the lining so you see that the right side here and if I just flip it over you've got the line in there and I should do this to the other end pin it all the way along then machine it that's all sewn down now I've done both ends exactly the same I'm just going to give this a trim here just take away that that excess fabric from the seam allowance and then that is ready for folding over now I've already folded the edge of this over okay I'm just going to make this a bit bigger so you can see what I've done right so that is the first line of stitching up here along there and then with this I've turned over about the same amount of seam allowance and by the way I haven't cut this on the bias this isn't bias binding it's just going to be a decorative edge so I now have the center fold and I have another fold here just to so denote where I'm folding it to sew it down so I'm going to turn that over and then tuck that under here make that a little bit bigger there we go so I'm going to tuck that under here and go right over that seam allowance and match that edge with the stitching with the, the line here that's been sewn so over we go here and I'm going to pin that now once again it's up to you whether you tack over your pins or if you feel that um, you don't need to tack you're just going to pin now that should produce a nice even edging both front and back back being the line inside now I'm going to over sew this or slip stitch it or hem stitch it it gets called many things just a regular little over sewing stitch will do and we don't want to take our stitches through to the front we don't want our hand sewing here to show on the front now if you think that you can do this on your sewing machine um, very neatly so you sew in the ditch and it won't show now the ditch is here it's the join here now if you think you can do that so in the ditch very neatly along there so you catch this side but your stitches go in there I can't do that I've tried and I mess it up so much I would rather sit and do that by hand but it's your work and if you feel that you can do that by all means you do that now <laughs> I've been talking I think I've put far too many pins here but <laughs> that doesn't matter now as you can see it's looking like a hedgehog now so I turn that round and I shall make this a bit smaller oh that what needs one there it's going off and making its um it's making its own mind up there about which way it's going to fall so there we are now I'm now going to do a little slip stitch 
all the way along here and I'm going to do the other end exactly the same this end exactly the same so I will fold that over pin it and uh, hand stitch it all the way along and that will be the effect okay so I'm going to carry on with that and with that and, and then it'll be time to put the bind in along the two edges okay so we're getting there very very slowly slow but steady two ends have been done sewn down with a tiny little over sew stitch along there and machine sewn there so I'm quite pleased with that the other end is the same but it's so long that I'm not oh well, let me see if I can yeah so that is the other end as well um, I thought it was too long <laughs> now I've started pinning down the sides and I'm going to do it exactly the same way that I've done both ends the only difference is now when I get to the end here I've extended it by about half an inch pin it there and then right at the end I'm going to tuck that in so it's in line with this with that line there with that edge there it needs to be in line with that and I'm going to match that up so they're both in line now let me make that a little bit bigger now you can mitre these but if I don't have to mitre I won't <laughs> as many of you know I'm just going to put a border there without any mitering at all so that is now edge to edge same length and I'm going to pin that like that and sew along here I'm going to sew right the way over the fold there and just as I did for these okay so I want to keep that nice now once that's been sewn down all I do is flip that over turn it under and just continue sewing like I have done here okay so I'll do that on each of the ends so I'll be doing this four times all right each end I'll just turn that over and then flip it over and hand sew it so here it is all finished it's been edged all the way round the four sides I'll move it very very carefully there we go so the inside looks the same the bag that inspired me the one that I showed you from the museum it was it had the flap about a quarter way down so that is the back no this is the front so the flap of the back would be about a quarter way down so say that's half that would be about a quarter here so if I push this down a little way the flap would come about there giving us a bag like this oops it's not straight there um, giving us a bag like that which means I can't get this straight on the, on the screen so it would give us a bag like that and a back like that which is an awful shame because most of the detail will be on the back so I've decided to alter it a little bit and bring that down just a bit more now I'm not quite sure where maybe about a half and a half something like no no no, no I don't want that maybe maybe about there like this I think so the front would be like that and so would the back so I quite like that effect so I am going to play around just to see 
um, what I think is would be the best um, proportions for, for the bag and the design actually I like that as well so that's straight we we'll run that along there yeah I quite like that right as soon as I decide on that all I'm going to do is pin these together and I think I'll do it from the right side I'm going to pin them together from there to there and the same this side and I'm just going to over sew them with a very small over sew stitch and I might use the thread um, double just to strengthen it a little bit on here I use this, this thread uh, I just use single thread but I think because this as I said earlier this might take a little bit of strain it needs to be a little bit um, more secure a bit tougher so I'm going to use regular sewing machine thread which is quite tough um, you, and use it double and I'll do that, I'll work that out as soon <laughs> I'll do that as soon as I've worked out where I want this flap to come to and it's finished completely finished I'll just run through what I've done I actually forgot to film so that is why it's finished so I've jumped straight from needing to do the sides to the finished thing so um, I'm really sorry about that but I did get carried away just forgot so I've joined the seams either side with blanket stitch very small blanket stitch right the way down here that side and along here this side nice and strong in there you can see now at the end I've added either side two rings one here and one here and I've over sewn them in place just between the seams of the front pocket and the back and they're quite sturdy and all these are are um, key ring rings and I put another one here as well and I've over sewn that one with blanket stitch starting from the inside and just over sewing it there you'll see how that closes in a minute um, and I've added a strap now this is burlap or hessian depending on where you, you come from I've kept the frayed edge because I really like that now I did weigh up the pros and cons of using the edging fabric for the tie but I thought it looked too pretty uh, sorry for the the um, strap it looked too pretty pretty that isn't the what I wanted for this particular project um, I want it to look like some sort of work bag although <laughs> having said that it would make quite a nice dress bag as well but um, so I discarded that idea and it was just by luck that I found this in a charity shop a couple of weeks ago and there's a whole reel of it and it was 20p and it's quite it's actually this is actually cut in half it's that wide so I've cut the strip as long as I want and I think it's about a meter maybe about 33 inches so that is exactly the size I wanted now all I've done here it's really really easy in this fabric I've kept the frayed bit and I've turned this over here I've turned it in half and I've machine sewn along here I then looped the ends the ends of this after it's been sewn of it I've then looped the ends through the loops like this and I've just put a few rows of stitch in there to hold it firm so if you look there you might be able to see the stitching 
there and they're nice and tight so that only left one more task and that was to put something to close in there to make this close and I've chose some grey ribbon I took this out of an old diary because it just matched the, the colour here and the idea is just to loop it in and just close it ribbon tie just like that okay so there you are finished there's only one thing to do now and that's to say <laughs> if my things go in um, I had them here a minute ago. Right, that is one sketch pad in there. And then we have, oh my gosh, I bet these all won't these one all go in, but we don't need them all at one time. Now this is only a fraction of the pens I have. Oh, yes, it does actually go in. And then this will come down and tie here. Lovely. Everything fits in there nicely. That looks as if they're, they're too big there, hanging over, but I think that is just the way the camera is picking it up. And of course, the contents has now pulled it forward. But um, yeah, that is a good fit, actually. So there we are, front and back. But since I've made it, I've decided I'm not going to put my, my dirty old pencils in there. I should just store it away with everything else, I suppose. But, um, yeah, I'm very pleased with that. So I should take those out, treat it like some sort of royalty, and store it away. So keep the book in there, and you can just see. I, yeah, I think that is really nice. Actually, that would make a nice tablet bag as well put my tablet in there but on that note that's finished I hope you enjoyed that it came a long way from the artichoke um, I really envisage something like this so we came a long way from that the initial inspiration coupled together with the hemp leaf so we married both we had two lots of inspiration there um, joined them together and came up with the bag. If you're still with me, thank you for staying to the end. Um, do put your things on Facebook. So hopefully you'll all have a go at doing this. And um, I hope you enjoy it if you do. Hey, actually, that would have looked nice that way, wouldn't it? What effect would that have been? No, it's too late, it's too late. I'm going now and I'm going to pop this away. It's finished. It really is finished. <gasps> I think I'm trying to convince myself. So anyway, all take care. Um, enjoy whatever you're doing. And I'll get back to you very, very soon. Take care now.